offensively, your guys seem to be pretty locked in. Um, yeah. What have you seen in their approaches and their at bats? Well, I mean, it's the last maybe I don't know week or so, the, the at bats have been really good. <clears throat> been grinding out at bats. Uh, just not missing many mistake pitches. Um, you know, obviously Nate Lowe has kind of led the charge offensively, but uh, everybody's been contributing. Like it's been a full, you know, full onslaught from the top to the bottom pretty much. And tonight with the bottom half of the lineup really, you know, came through big for us tonight. So, yeah, everybody's been contributing, and that's that's kind of how you want it to be. I mean, you want a lineup that flows, and from top to bottom it can be productive, and uh, that's what we've had, you know, over the last five or six days, and it's fun to watch. Mark Mathias just told me that this coaching staff's philosophy and the information presented to him has been extremely key mm -hmm. in the hot start that he has gotten off to. What have you seen from him and that's kind of clicked? Well, obviously, if the information has been good for, as far as the game plan and everything, uh, but he has a good swing. I mean, he has a really good approach to hitting. It seems seemingly, it was a small sample size for us. Uh, we haven't seen him a, a lot, but for the short, short time period that he's been here, you know, he seems like he has good, a good idea of the strike zone, he has a good swing, uh, good path to his, to his swing, and he can hit the ball in all parts of the field. Uh, you know, Homer, his first game here to left, the 90 homers to right center. So it's just been impressive to watch him have at-bats against lefties, righties, or what have you. So I just think he's got a pretty good approach to hitting, and obviously right now he's riding some confidence as well. Before the game, we talked a little bit about Adolis and Nate both taking a step forward this yeah. season. How big have they been just in the middle of the lineup, especially following those two guys at the top? Yeah, I mean, those guys, you know, they stabilize us. You know, that's the bridge, like three and four to, you know, get down to Jonah at, at five and, and Tavares at six. And so they've been the kind of the, the middle of the order that's kind of kept things together for us. Uh, They've been consistent for the most part of the season. And, uh, you know, I, I like where they are right now, both of them. Um, you know, Nate is obviously on another level. But, you know, right now, both of those guys are giving you quality at best. They're both dangerous guys. You know, they can do damage at any time. Like, you never know when, you know, Nate's going to hit one deep. Or Dolis, you don't know when he's going to strike. So it just, just adds uh, pressure for opposing pitchers. You know, you got to face those guys uh, back to back. And you make mistakes, and they have the ability to make you pay. They're both really thriving since the All-Star break, mm -hmm. specifically. Have I know we talked a little bit about Nathaniel's mechanical changes, but mm -hmm. Adolis, have you seen anything in particular that he's changed, or is it just, like I, you said, an upswing for him? Yeah, I really haven't seen anything uh, mechanically that, uh, that he's changed. I haven't heard anyone talk about that. Uh, the hitting coaches haven't said that they've made any uh, mechanical adjustment, but uh, I just think he's in a good place mentally. A lot of times you just got to be in a good headspace, and uh, hitting is a difficult thing, uh, but when you feel good about your swing, you feel good about your, your chances on any given night, that makes a difference, and I think, you know, Dolis believes in himself. So, uh, he has a good feel for how his body works and how his swing works. Uh, you know, he chases at times, uh, but he's always ready to do damage in the zone. And so when he gets pitches he can handle, uh, he has a, a tendency to come through. So you flipped the script a little bit at the end of the game. What was, uh, what was the thought process there? <laughs> what do you mean I flipped the strip? Well, I mean, you went Jonathan in the eighth. Well, it was based on the lineup. And um, we felt like the eighth lineup was kind of towards the middle of the order. And we felt like it was a better matchup for, for Johnny. And then it was, it was based on uh, the availability of what we had tonight as far as innings. Uh, Johnny was for one. Her, uh, Leclerc was available for two if need be. So... It didn't, wouldn't make sense in, in our conversation during the game to, to bring Leclerc first. And then if we had a bailout with Johnny, then we couldn't bail him out in the eighth. But Leclerc could have bailed Johnny out in the eighth and finished the ninth. So it was just, you know, Leclerc had two innings of work tonight if need be. And, and Johnny only had one. So it kind of worked out for us in both ways. And you had Brett up in the eighth, too. Was there any thought that going to him since you had the... Switchy, switch no, not not in the eighth. It wasn't. Uh, I mean, not at the end. It wasn't. But it was a Matt Moore uh, was up. Uh, oh, just just in case. Yeah, Matt Matt Moore was up. Uh, just in case we needed him to to come in and finish.